Welcome back to Bravo Breaking News with Kim and Lisa. This week on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Kyle and Mauricio are giving us a peek inside their marriage issues, and it is awkward to say the least. And Erica is still on the hunt for an apology from the ladies, but does she actually deserve one? We are going to get into all of our hot takes, but before we do, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any Bravo breaking news. So we start off with this scene with Erica and her therapist, and, you know, she's all excited about her residency, and they talk about kind of the story arc that she's had over the years, you know, coming out of all of these legal issues with Tom. And they start to talk about Tom and how basically he was what made all of this possible, and she relied on him so much, but now she's kind of had to, you know, do it on her own. And... I just have to say, I don't know. Have you watched The Housewife and The Hustler yet, Lisa? No, Kim, it is on my list. And I know it just came out, but I have not gotten to it yet. Have you watched? Yes. And I have to say, I know I have been in Erica Stan for the past couple weeks, but my thoughts have shifted a little bit after mm-hmm. seeing that because a few things stood out to me in the documentary. Guys, if you have not watched it, make sure you go watch it on Hulu. But I think we've all seen the clips of Erica meeting with some of the victims on mm-hmm. um, Tom's, you know, lawsuits. And it is not good, guys. I mean, when when she says, I don't know how to show empathy, this is the prime example of it because she is stone faced, no emotions, almost acting as if she was also a victim of Tom. You know, she is, you know, steadfast in that she didn't know she wasn't a part of it. You know, he basically frauded her too. And it was really, really the wrong approach to go in the room with the victims. I mean, there's also a story about that designer, Marco Marco, that she, you know, accused of stealing $800,000 from her of money that she did not approve for designs for her tours and everything. But he had the receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots to back everything up, but was still held in court for five years. I mean, guys, this documentary exposed a lot of things that don't technically make Erica guilty, but do not make her look good in any sense. Yikes. Are you surprised? No, I'm not surprised. But I did think that we were seeing a little bit of a redemption arc, you know, her side of Erica. And I do think if we're talking about timeline, I think that this scene of her meeting with the victims was around the same time of filming Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So during this season, she is starting to, you know, be a little bit softer and a little right. more likable. And I really wish she brought that of all days to bring it. It was the day to meet with the victims. Yeah, that is that's weird. Like that is very odd, you would think. And it kind of you kind of do get a glimpse of that in the trailer where I think Someone asks her, why is it taking you so long to do this? This being sitting down with the victims. And she simply says, no one ever asked me. And it's like, okay, but couldn't you have come up with that yourself? Look, I want to sit down with the victims. I want to have a conversation with them. You can hold to the idea that you didn't know what was going on. Fine. But you can also say, I am so sorry that you're going through this. I am so sorry that this man I was married to is causing, you know, has caused you this pain. And she just doesn't seem to be able to get to that in her head. So if she knows that she can't get there, then why sit down with them at all? It's just so odd to me. It was so odd. I mean, but we we get more of Erica later in the episode. Oh, just one last thing on this. It's like, I want to root for Erica. I think you do too. And I think most of the audience does. But like Dorit said in the end of this episode, she doesn't make it easy. And so it's like, Erica, just give us, she was doing a little better, you know, a couple weeks ago, but now we're back in this same cycle of victim mentality. I know. And we have this documentary. Then we'll have the bet it all on blonde, like two part special series, which I'm sorry, nobody asked for. Nobody asked for this. I don't think not one person. No, like no one. And then Erica, bet it all on blonde, two part series coming to Bravo. Like, honestly, no. So I don't know. I thought this was all part of her redemption arc, but the documentary did not do her any favors. Okay, my my weekend binge for sure. 
So, okay, let's hop over to Sutton. She's at the stable. She is going to ride Santos for the first time. She doesn't even know which horse is hers. You know, she sees a horse and I was like, I thought her horse had white on it. Like she didn't even know what he looks like. But anyway, we love her. Kyle arrives and, you know, kind of watches her do some trots around the ring. Then they sit down and talk about their marriages. And what big thing is revealed, which is that Christian, Sutton's ex-husband, lives down the street from her. I don't know why, but in my head, I always pictured him as being like in New York or in Georgia or I don't know, in the Valley. I, I don't know but not so close in proximity to her. And so I thought that was just like, oh, okay, did not realize that at all. Not that it really makes a difference, but just an interesting tidbit. And then Kyle asks if they ever went to marriage therapy, marriage counseling, and Sutton says they didn't, but Kyle reveals that her and Mo are going to therapy and kind of talks about how Kyle has always been there to support him, when they were to, when they first got together, they had nothing, right? And they've they've now like risen to the top. And as Mauricio is going one way, she's kind of going the other way because now she doesn't have little kids to deal with and you know take care of. And so they're kind of just growing apart, though they're not growing to the top together. And so, what was your whole like read on this? I think it was very interesting because of how Sutton and Kyle clashed so hard in the beginning of this season. And now mm-hmm. they're sitting down together, almost sharing very eerily similar stories. You know, uh-huh. that's basically like, that's kind of what happened in my marriage. My husband got really successful, like was traveling all the time. I barely saw him. And that's like not, you know, good for th- the trajectory of Kyle and Mauricio's relationship, if Sutton's relationship is any indication. So that's tough. That's tough to watch. But We did get such a fun scene with Sutton's date. And I can't help but think, are we going to be seeing scenes like this with Kyle next season? But I want to get your thoughts on Sutton's date because I loved it so much. So she has a second date with Steve and they just hit it off. You know, she pulls out the ocean spray. He thinks her bag is Celine Dion. I mean, they play darts. It's just like so easy And I don't know if he's just like playing it up for the cameras, but he's actually like naturally funny, charismatic, very cute. Like I think they're so good together. I thought it was adorable. I love that they went to a very low key place. It wasn't a fancy, you know, dinner and, you know, expensive wine and stuff like that. They went to like a bar. She wore jeans. Of course, she had her Celine bag, but that's, you know, she's Sutton. And I agree. I thought he was so cute. And he, you know, seemed to charm her. And I did notice like when he was throwing the darts, she kind of like went and put her cheek on his shoulder. So she was, I think she was feeling it a little bit. And and I liked it. And I loved seeing this sort of easy breezy side of Sutton as well. I agree. I absolutely loved it. Now shifting over to a couple that was not so easy breezy is we see Kyle and Mauricio talking at their house and talking about going to therapy together. And you guys, I hate to say it, but like, I think he just gives her the ick right now. Like, she just, they're just not on the same page. He would say something and she would say, well, that's not exactly what I'm meaning. Or, you know, he would say, yeah, therapy can be fun. And she's like, well, and I wouldn't say it's fun. Well, no, that's not what I meant fun. You know, I meant it's, it's a reflection. Well, yeah, it's a reflection, but like also this. And they are just, they're just not vibing. And I feel like she is more checked out than ever. I think she has tasted this bit of independence and getting to do things on her own terms and, you know, not being just the wife and the mom that she's been expected to be for all these years. And I think she likes having her independence. And now she's just kind of, I think she's got the ick. I don't know. And I think it seems like she wants to put in the effort to make this work. She wants to fix it. She realizes that there's problems. She's trying to communicate it to him. And it doesn't seem like Mauricio is taking this seriously at all. He is laughing it off. He's saying that it's fun. He's saying, you know, oh, we're in the best place we've ever been because of therapy. And Kyle's like, excuse me, what? Like, there are still a lot of issues And he just doesn't seem to be willing to put in the work or have time to put in the work and effort to make it right. And like, 
if you're not going to put in the effort, nothing's going to happen. They're going to split up. He's going to be married to his job and I guess find some other young hot thing who doesn't really give a shit whether he's around or can just right. travel with him wherever he goes. Whereas Kyle has her own profession. She has things she wants to be around and pursue. And that's not fair to her. She can't live that life. And it just seems like I don't I don't see a solution for them. So I think one reason why Mauricio is maybe not taking it so seriously is because I think that in his mind, divorce is not on the table. I think he is sort of taking for granted that Kyle will not leave, you know, that she would never do that. And so, sure, they're going through a rough patch, but I don't think in his mind it would ever get past that. And in Kyle's mind, she is basically to the point of, look, if it's not serving me anymore, my kids are grown. I'm not going to stay in a situation where I don't feel like I'm being prioritized or respected. And the one line that I thought was really, really telling is when she said she wouldn't want her daughters to put up with, you know, accepting this kind of marriage. And so why should she accept it for herself? I thought that was like really insightful into where she's at. And I think that he just doesn't realize how kind of far gone she is. Yeah, she's gone. She's out. She actually recently did an interview, which I haven't listened to the whole thing, but she mentions that they're free to date other people. Like, they are completely separated right now. Whoa. So, so I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because we are, we are not at the end. Oof. Okay, so Anne-Marie's hosting this Mother's Day brunch. She's doing champagne and diamonds. You know, everyone seemed impressed at the flowers and the decor and the food and the the jewelry that was brought in. I don't know that she needed to have, you know, $4 million jewels brought in. Like no one's dropping $4 million at your Mother's Day brunch. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. You know, she says that Crystal's coming. Crystal kind of reveals she's nervous to come. She arrives with this new hairstyle. She's got like some faux bangs on. And I thought she looked so good. But at first I was like, wait, who is that? And Tipsy Sutton arrives with a roadie that Avi made her. Can I just say, I would love a little spinoff show with Avi and Sutton. Like send them to Crappy Lake. I feel that it would be hilarious with him just kind of, you know, her barking orders and him just running around and like giving us funny phrases. But I love them. You know, they did they did do a close up on the Corbell champagne, which was her champagne that she was serving. What did you think of that, Kim? I mean, not Corbell. Like, a, not Corbell. Like, right next to $4 million worth of diamonds. Exactly. Like, it's not adding up. Let's at least do above, like a Moet, you know, anything but Corbell. I mean, come on. I, I don't know. Anne Marie, you know, she doesn't quite do it right, you know? So, yeah. It's always just not quite there. Like the catering looked really beautiful, but then what caterer brings in Corvell to go with all that? Like it was just very, didn't quite get it. But I am Tipsy Sutton. I love a roadie. If I had a driver driving me around everywhere I went, I would also have a roadie. And good thing she brought a roadie because who wants Corbell? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know me, it's just not, she is not doing it for me. And it continues when she sits down with Crystal because it's so forced. It's almost like she planned this whole party just to sit down with Crystal because they have to resolve their issues from the Spain trip. So they sit down and it is literally over within 10 seconds. They're like, you know, we got off on the wrong foot. We agree to disagree. Let's move on. And I'm like, right. What? Crystal, this is your chance to milk it. Like, I know we met Crystal, in case you guys missed it, at Kathy Hilton's Christmas party. And she was fabulous, but she shared, you know, she's not one for confrontation. But girl, Crystal, this was your chance to bring it. Like Anne Marie brought up all of these things that you said about the women. You denied saying them and you're just going to like breeze over that because those were kind of like serious accusations that she was throwing shade at these ladies who she's been friends with for a very long time. So I don't know. I think Crystal well, should not have brushed this under the rug. I think she should have milked this. I think she should have come after Anne-Marie at her party and given her a taste of her own medicine. And I meant that doctor pun, literally. That's nice. I see what you did there. So I have a theory. 
I think that Crystal didn't want to milk it and bring it back up and make such a big deal of it because I do think she said those things. I don't think she said them with bad intention. I don't think it was one of those, you know, her just going off. But I think she said it in passing. If you go back a couple of recaps ago, I was like, here's how the conversation went. Oh, you know, I have fun with the girls. Sometimes the conversation can be shallow, like, you know, like they're not the most educated group, but like we always have fun and I've grown to love them dearly. And Anne Marie took it and twisted it. So I think Crystal is not doubling down and not going so hard for this because she knows that she kind of did say those things. Interesting. However, I don't think it's going to land either of them on the cast next season. So we'll see. Yeah. I my one of my favorite moments of the night though was when they're all the rest of the ladies are sitting kind of perching on the couch in the other room and they're like, we're not nosy. And yet they're all kind of, you know, leaning over, trying to get a look at what they're saying, what's happening in this conversation with Anne Marie and Crystal. I love it. That's I, I need to get that screenshot. Well, I've got it for you. I've got you covered. Uh, thank you. So then we get into Erica, right? She has everyone sitting down and she says that she wants to bring something up. And she says, you know, I just I feel like you guys weren't there for me when I revealed in Spain about my, you know, the ruling that was in my favor. And she said, I feel like we need to stand up for each other more. And I feel like you guys need to stand up for me more. She says she did not feel supported at all over the last couple of years. Dorit and Kyle immediately like take offense to this because you know, they say, we were supportive of you. We were blindly supportive of you, even if it was causing backlash against us. And like you said, I don't know what Erica's expecting, but like, she's not going to get it. And she even acknowledges that. And it's like, well, then maybe you need to adjust your expectations, Erica. Maybe what you're expecting is not right. Garcelle is amazing, though, because Garcelle says, listen, I didn't want you to fall but I had an opinion and I'm going to stick to that opinion forever. And this is why I love Garcelle because she is not one to bend with the pressure of the group. You know, she will stick to her beliefs and she will call it like it is, like how she sees it. And, you know, Sutton apologized. And I, you know, Sutton was definitely the main like prosecutor when it came to Erica over the past couple of years. But Garcelle, you know, certainly said some things too. And she says, listen, that's how I felt in the moment. And sounds like maybe she still feels that way. Like it reminded me of why I love Garcelle so much because she is so strong in that, in her self, in her beliefs. Yeah. She was basically like, sorry, not sorry. And like, yeah, didn't really say much else. Um, But I do agree with Sutton's apology. You know, she's like, And I think Kyle said this, too. You know, it's like we never thought you did it. It's just the way you were handling things. Exactly. It's still the way she's handling things. Exactly. I think that there needs to be like action, you know, taken on her end to really. And she's trying this season, but I don't think she's quite there yet to really, you know, change their minds and make them think differently and make them really feel like that she deserves an apology. Because right now. I'm not sure she's done much, but, you know, maybe be a little softer in her personality and say, well, I won the appeal for the earrings. Like, you still haven't really shown empathy. You haven't really, you know, explained what's going on. I want to know what the ladies think of this documentary, The Housewife and the Hustler. I want Sutton's feedback. I I need an interview with her stat about this because, I mean, it's bringing up a lot of new information that I think might change these ladies' opinions a little bit. Yeah, I just don't understand what she thinks they need to be sorry for. I really don't. Like, they were never saying, Erica, you stole money from people. They were just upset with how she was behaving as a human being towards other human beings. And like you said, sorry, not sorry. I mean, yeah, if you were an asshole, I'm going to say you were an asshole. Like, just because you got an appeal or an appeal went in your favor, you know, two years later doesn't mean that back then you weren't an asshole. Yeah. So I don't know. I think we're going to see a little bit more of this play out next week. We also get, and again, a performance that nobody asked for, Erica Jane at the white party. But we do get the scenes that I have been talking about. The cameras pick back up when Kyle and Mauricio announce their split. 
We're going to see everybody's reactions. We're going to see a sit down with Kyle, Mo, and the girls. So mm. next week's season finale, I think, is definitely going to be one for the books. Yes, I will have my Kleenex handy because I can already tell in that scene with the girls, I'm going to be emotional. Yeah, so make sure you guys tune in, subscribe so you don't miss any more recaps and Bravo breaking news to come. See you all next time. <laughs>